I think prior to this project, a lot of the ways that I organize my thoughts for very large projects or very large English papers, it was quite haphazard. And I kind of took it for granted that I was going to be able to do it almost intuitively. And in a sense, this project made me more aware of the limitations of just doing things off the cuff. You know, they're sitting up and you can't write, you know, a 30 what a page paper, you know, in a night. It's just not, it's not possible. And a lot of people left the work, you know, to the last few days. And it's, I think if you just follow the steps and, um, and the times that, um, that they set for us, um, it was really, you know, a fair um, gauge for time. And also, you know, it wasn't hard to meet the goals because of the amount of like time and assistance that they provided us with um, and that they were so open to helping us um, to complete that it wasn't that we didn't have enough, you know, guidance or help to complete it. It was more of, I guess, the motivation to complete it that I think is important. So if you're not motivated for your topic, then obviously it's going to be very difficult to complete the paper on it. I think I didn't manage my time to the best of my ability in the beginning. And therefore, I got a little behind, but Ms. Schmidt helped me uh, catch up, made sure that I got everything done by the deadlines. So once you get the lesson and it's thoroughly explained, the entire thing comes very easily. It's not difficult to do once you have instruction. Now that I've done it once, I feel that I could go find another topic and write another one and have it done in a matter of days. It, it takes a while. The process is long but we go into a lot of detail on each aspect. So now when I go to college, if I have a paper due in a week, I'll be able to efficiently go through and get every single thing done uh, very thoroughly because of this. Well, Mrs. Schmidt, she does a really good job of breaking down the steps. So when I start, when we started the project, I never would have believed that I could do it. So, I learned so much about myself and that I'm so much more capable than I thought I was. And um, it's going to be really helpful in college because my brother, he's a freshman, and some of his friends at college, the longest paper they ever wrote was just two pages. Uh, someone brought the book to college because they had to write a scientific literature review, and he ended up teaching all the students about it. That was pretty funny. So I'm expecting that. I hear it from everyone else who goes to college that uh, there's a lot of this kind of paper. The research that we do now basically prepares us for it pretty well. Um, makes me a lot less worried about college, of the workload. The transition should be easy. You know, don't lose that experience that, that you um, get from doing this. You know, I've been able to put it on college applications, um, on all sorts of um, different you know, scholarship opportunities, things like that. And it's definitely, you know, I really think that it's made a difference. Um, I'm actually undecided, yeah. but I would love to do, end up doing some sort of medical journalism, um, just writing about new developments. So, and that was pretty much what this was. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I might end up pre-med actually. Guided Inquiry was developed by Professor Carol Coulthor at Rutgers University. This was based on a 30-year period of researching how young people engage with information, connect with it, develop understanding of that information, and construct their own understanding, typically built around curriculum topics. Over the last 30 years, and through multiple research studies, Professor Coulthor has formalised this work in terms of guided inquiry. It's built on her research model known as the information search process. Guided inquiry is an instructional framework that engages students in a rich information to knowledge journey. It's a different approach to engaging students in formal school-based research. Traditionally, students are assigned a topic, they're often told to go and pick a topic, pick a bird, pick a dinosaur, pick a disease, pick a planet. And what we found in our research that students typically do this fairly superficially. They simply go to a Wikipedia site or some other 
general information site and simply collect a whole lot of facts. What they're doing is transporting a set of facts from one source to their own document. Guided inquiry engages them in the substantive transformation of that information. It takes them away from those pre-digested formats of information, from factual compilations. Certainly it engages them in building that factual base, that background knowledge but then it engages them in finding those questions that they're curious about, that they wonder about, that they are intrigued about, or that they're even confused about. And that becomes the focus of their inquiry. I became interested in this topic um, because, well, after seeing um, the movie Girl Interrupted, um, because the main character, um, one of the main characters has um, borderline personality disorder, and still today it's one of the disorders that not much is known about it. One of the things I do with them, and I actually verbalize, I say, you have to learn to interrogate the text. Yes. You yes. have to learn to not, not necessarily not trust the text, but interrogate it. And so you we build into the assignment the fact that they're looking for omissions. Yes. They're looking yes. for errors. They're looking for yes. trends. And that helped them really to to think in a different way about what is a very daunting bunch uh, of material. And, and, and that's what they, you know, it was very interesting for them to all reflect and say, 
uh, this was so daunting, but the fact that it was a staged process, yeah. and this is part of the whole inquiry framework, that it is a staged progress, and you can move feeling that you're making progress. I've had kids who are not nearly as accomplished as she, who have uh, attached their papers to college application, and then they come on and be like, Mrs. Schmidt, I got a research scholarship just because colleges are not used to seeing this kind of stuff. So I've had kids actually, and again, not the top of the class, but they're the kids who did the work, they did it diligently. Mm. It, mm. it is surprisingly pretty formulaic. The kind of paper is a very formulaic mm. paper. Mm. But it's a process, it's a staged process. Yeah. So it takes them along. And that's what they were all saying. If you follow the process and get the help that you need, you're going to get to the end product. And so they understood the process and the value of that process. What was very interesting was the number of students who at the end said, I'm really proud of my work. That's internalising the learning, yeah. isn't yeah. it? It really, when they come away, they have such pride and a, such a sense of accomplishment, acknowledging that when they first started out, this was terribly, terribly daunting. And then for them to say, I'm really proud of what I did. I, nice. think, I think when you, when you take something that's very difficult and something that you're introducing students to, and this, this project, they've never seen a scientific study for the most part. If you take that kind of assignment and you break it down into chunks, manageable chunks, and they do one chunk and they see they can do that chunk. They do another chunk and they see they can do that chunk. They do another chunk and pretty soon the chunk become it's like a train. The chunk becomes a train and the train starts going and pretty soon it's picking up its own steam. I want to bring one more person mm, in here. Sure. Because she gave me the chunk concept. She said to me the other day, she's my intern. She was my student here several years ago, in 2003 or four. She did this paper. She said, Mandy, do you always teach by chunks? And I think I do, I always teach by chunks. I think that the most important thing is to get them to understand that it's, although it's a long process with a big final product, everything can be done in chunks and you can break everything down and once they realize that we have a whole master plan for them and that they um, they can do everything in, in small pieces then at the end it all comes together in a way that makes more sense to them and is more meaningful I think. What they also acknowledged I think was that they were never left alone to struggle all of them picked up on the sense of that there's help available. We can go to our teachers, we can go to our school librarian, and they acknowledge that that help was very, very supportive in helping them move through the various stages. And I think that's a really important uh, thing to learn when, when students undertake such a large research project that often they feel that they're left to their own devices, that here there was that sense of help that was nurturing them along and, and building their self-confidence and building their sense, yes, I can do this. That was a very important thing that the students conveyed. You know, the guided inquiry concept, I often use the model of Sacagawea. Sacagawea was the Indian woman who I think was 19 at the time that Judy started with Lewis and Clark. And she took Lewis and Clark to the other side of the continent. She had never been to the other side of the continent herself. So as a guide, it wasn't as though she knew everything. We don't know everything the kids are reading. We don't know everything about this stuff, but, oh my goodness. <laughs> we, we are not experts on what they're doing. 
But because of that, there's something very comforting for the student about that. Because what we're doing is we're going through, we're saying, come on, you can do this. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. help you. Mm. But we can't tell you because we don't know ourselves. We're just guiding you. We're giving you the fundamentals to find the other side of the continent or the other side of the information wilderness, as we call it. Mm. And, and so when you're guiding, it, it does help to explain to the student that they're not alone, that, that, that you're not, we're not going to leave you to get lost. We're not going to leave you to get to, to get eaten by the lions and tigers and bears. We're going to really take you step by step or chunk by chunk or however. I could not do this project by myself. It's a very labor-intensive mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. The teachers are helpful. The interns that I have come in who are themselves interested in either teaching or Amelia is an immediate studies person. Those kinds of people are so helpful because first of all, the younger, the kids can see that they used to be kids themselves. <laughs> and that does help a lot. It really does. Well done, Randy. It's a fantastic accomplishment listening to these young people. And what I think is really amazing is that they articulate the value of doing this project into them as students when they go off to college. Mm -hmm. um, as Roscoe said at the end, he said, I won't necessarily take the topic. He was looking at the health benefits of laughter. After. I probably won't take that topic with me, but the process of creating my research project I'll take that with me. I will apply it. It will enable me to get these research projects done in in a time frame, in a pressured yeah. time frame, because they've learned a process, they've learned to manage the time requirements, and they feel that that will help them with their productivity. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful to see. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you. Thank That's you okay. very much.